Hi everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing on the SH Figure Arts from the Star Wars Mandalorian show IG-11. Now this particular item is known as a Soul Web exclusive so I was only able to get this overseas. Um, you probably could be able to get this um, somewhere in the States but they would have a higher premium price on it because it was not. it's not going to be released um, by Bluefin I believe anywhere. But I was very fortunate to uh, get this uh, pre-ordered a couple months ago and I'm very happy to have this in front of me and probably show you guys how it is. Now as you can see when they were sent to me it was sent and the, its original shipper box which is kind of cool. It measures closely uh, lengthwise about eight and a half by five uh, inches wide in case you were wondering. So let me get this out and as you can see right there we have the actual figure in its box and it looks really nice. It's a freaking huge tall box so um, it's it's sort of like it threw me off because I wasn't aware how tall this actual uh, droid or IG droid is because you don't really know how tall he is based on um, what the original images were from at least the original Star Wars trilogy with IG-88 but in the Mandalorian we got to see how he was uh, tall wise but at the same time it's sort of like you don't really get to see how tall he is in a way um, but as you can see right here we have the actual IG-11 figure inside and you can see he has two of his weapons and he looks like right here he has also uh, removable hands or at least uh, swappable hands. He also has what he looks to be uh, some sort of detonator or some sort for his chest piece. But the most important thing I see that I'm interested in, in getting my hold my hands on is the little bag here which is supposed to be the bag from the scout trooper when they picked up uh, the child. And then of course, IG-11 ends up taking the child with this bag on him. So it's a really cool accessory that I see. And in the back, you can see right here, along the way you can see the figure itself standing next to Mando, the other SH figure arts figure. And then you can see that it has right here, uh, different portion different looks for his head it looks like it might move and you can see of course the child here with the bag on and of course a nice stylized version or a nice uh, look for man uh, not mando for the for the droid the ig11 droid but uh let's you know you've seen the box it doesn't really matter what's in matters is what's inside so let's take a look at it there we go Looks really nice. And then we have, ah, there we go. There's the figure in its clamshell. Um, it's a nice little background right here. It looks to be on the original planet of Navarro. And then we have the instructions. And as I mentioned before, it's always important to look at the instructions because sometimes you may not understand exactly how this figure may work and it's uh, little accessories, how they go on. So it's important to look at it. Uh, there are They are in Japanese, but at the same time, they do a very good job of giving you a good diagram, diagram of how everything works. And now that we have the figure out of the packaging, I can tell you by first looks, just my first impressions of this figure, it is amazing. It's just the way it looks, it's just great. I mean, Wow, I am really impressed by Bandai's ability to create this droid and make him look even better than I thought. Now, he is a pretty tall figure, and to give you an idea of how tall he is, um, if you put the ruler right next to him, he is roughly a little bit over seven and a half inches. That's a pretty tall figure. So that's a, I mean, that's really, really cool. But let's look at the details of it, because that's one of the things that I think it's important to look at. Now... One of the first things I want to take a look at is the head because the headpiece has always been a very mystery to me because I never understood exactly how they actually see. And I believe it was mentioned that uh, these two little things here are his eyes, whereas everything else just seems to, these are the main eyes that you see. And then you see all these other like, details on there, which is pretty cool, which rotates completely. And what surprised me the most to find out is that this actual headpiece wasn't uh, reused from originally um, 
from the cantina scene in Mos Eisley. I, it was used in, in the background, I believe it, it served drinks, but they ended up actually reusing it to create this droid, which I think was amazing because you would never have thought that any kind of thing you would grab from the set or anywhere and just create something and people would just believe it and it's a droid. Um, as we come along here, we can see that he has these two bandoliers that go uh, uh, over him, which is what we see in the first episode of The Mandalorian in the first season. And they work really well. It's a very stiff plastic. Uh, it's not too bad. Um, it is hard to shift around because apparently it, it doesn't seem to want to sit down correctly. You have to shift it and get it in place. But it does lay down, down nicely. Now, even though the bandolier is on here, you can see that there is a lot of interesting details on here. And my first thought is that I... Um, my first initial thought when I saw these droids, or at least the IG droids, is that their full body was always like a dark color because that's how we saw originally IG-88 in the original film. But IG-11 is a much lighter figure. It's sort of like you don't notice how light he is. It's a lot of a tan and a lot of gold color on here. And there is a bit of a wash over that. And it, it kind of makes me feel like, you know, Either that was the original look for these figures. I mean, not figures, but the actual droid. And then along the way, they, you know, they got dirtier and they got messier. And then, of course, they don't get a paint job or anything. They're just droids. So you can see right here. Let me see if I can lift this up a bit so you can have a better look at that. You can see all this nice detail behind him, which looks really good. If you go forward this way, you can see the front right here, ab section area. Um, it's just really, it's just really nicely detailed. I mean, this area right here is just great. I mean, if you look at the hand or the arm, it's very thin, but it looks accurate in a way from what we see in the show. And then when you get to the leg parts, uh, I think what, I think the most, one of the most important things that shines about this figure is just the paint job. Um, you can see there's a lot of dirtiness and, or not, some of the paint's been rubbing off. And I think that also um, goes back to the original uh, idea of how in Star Wars it's used space and everything has been um, used up for so long that it, it seems to be normal. Sort of like nowadays when you have a car and then you've had it for so long it's gotten to a point where it's some of the paint may be peeling off or something may look a little dirtier than, than it was but it's functional and I think this is the same thing back here I mean here is that a lot of things in Star Wars looks old and, and dirty and messed up but it looks functional and all of this even the little wiring right here I'm not sure if it's plastic it's plastic it's I don't know if it's like a vinyl rubbery thing but it's it's there and as you can see there's two of them on his left leg and then there's one of them here that goes around and it's really uh, really looks cool I don't know why that just looks really cool and as you can see there we have his feet which in some case it does kind of look like um, an R2 unit droid uh, his feet it's just a little bit different but it kind of does look like that but I mean I can tell you overall the look of this guy is really um, doing justice for the IG droids. Some of his weapon accessories are right here are included with him and these are the two blasters that we see him uh, actually use in the show and the details of them are pretty good. Uh, I believe this one is to look exactly like the blaster that the stormtroopers use. The color of it is a little bit more of a uh, I want to say gunmetal with some copper look on it um, if that makes any sense and then we have here the other blaster which I have no idea what it's called but it's also really nicely detailed and done it just looks great I mean the look of it is really good and you also get a pair of trigger finger hands which uh, actually becomes useful because I'm because I do happen to have the black series IG 11 and 88 figures and I can tell you that those figures cannot hold the weapons very very easily so it's sort of like it's a struggle to have them to hold it with, with this, um, this is going to be much easier for me to use this IG-11 figure to hold his weapons and get him in a uh, shooting stance or if not a, uh, you know, any kind of um, stance that I, that I want an action stance for sure. 
but this is just good to have. Now interchanging those hands are actually pretty easy, but I also have to say be cautious because of the tininess or of the actual arm. Uh, you would want to hold on to where the wrist peg would be and then grab the hand and then pull it out. And at first I thought I broke it because I heard a snap be between the fingers, but the actual hands here are very soft uh, plastic, so you can move it, so you shouldn't have a problem trying to actually uh, uh, put it on and off. And here we have this one, put at least that, and then do the same for this side. Just slowly take it out, and then push the other one on. And then we have the two trigger finger hands on there. And with the trigger hands now on here, you can easily put in the guns that can go onto there. And just so you know, uh, each hand has a corresponding gun, so the right hand has this longer blaster, whereas the left hand has the Stormtrooper blaster. So you can't really use the one on the other because it would look weird, but once you put it in, it snugly fits. It looks really good on here. I mean, it just holds it and it doesn't fall out whatsoever, and that's great because I can tell you I don't like having guns fall off of people's hands. And one of the other accessories that IG-11 comes with is this little panel that can be placed in his chest to simulate the self-destruct sequence in which he uses in in the beginning of the first episode and also in the last episode when he sacrifices himself to save the rest of the team. And it's really nice that they actually added this. And it's, since it's a little small panel, it's easy to, easy to actually change. So in order to do that, I take the figure here and right here there is a little box piece that you can see and that comes off. Um, I have already loosened it, so it might comes off easily. There we go. Drop that for a bit. Don't lose that, of course. And then slide this in. And it'll fit really nice. Stick it in. And there we have the orb sticking out of his chest. Um, and now you can actually have him in a stance where he feels he's about to destroy himself in the first episode with uh, the Mando. And, of course, he doesn't do it, but... It is really cool just to have that because it looks sort of like, you know what, I'm I'm gun I am outgunned, but I'm taking everybody with me kind of look. So it's, this is really cool. And the accessory that I was most excited for with the release of this figure is this bag. And this is the bag of the scout trooper when he picks up the child and whisks him away on the speeder bike and carries him in it. And of course, this is also used by IG-11 when he rescues the child and puts him on his chest as he goes to rescue the rest of the team on the in Navarro. So this is something that I was really looking forward to. Now the plastic itself is a little hard. I would kind of worry that it's too hard because then it doesn't give you enough of a um, give whenever you're trying to put in the actual figure. But it also, I feel like the color is a little off. I thought the the actual bags were a little bit lighter like a m much lighter color than this, but I could be wrong because, I mean, they might be basing it off of what the show looked like compared to what it usually looks like in the original trilogy. But in order to use this, I'm going to need a volunteer. And here I have what uh, the child, the SH figure, a child figure that I reviewed a while ago. And in order to get him inside, it's going to take a little finessing. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the child's hands are all tucked in and moved in as best you can, because that's going to help, because otherwise, if you have it a little bit opened, it's going to get in the way. But I can tell you that as soon as you figure that out, and then you slowly but surely get the child in place and move it through, and as like I said, the plastic is a little rough, but once you can get that through, then you can have a really, really good looking figure right there. And that to me is probably the icing on the cake because now it looks a lot like what he did in the show. His head sticking out a bit and looking real fun. But now let's get this on IG-11's chest. Now the first thing you want to do in order to get the uh, bandolier off and the new piece on is that you're going to have to take the, the droid apart. And I think this is a very smart... Um, uh, choice on Bandai's part because being that it's a droid taking it apart into pieces makes it look as though it's you know been destroyed or it's a part and then you can use it in, in diorama pieces as so oh it's been destroyed in the side and the pieces and that to me it's just great but first let's continue on 
Now, we first want to grab a hold of the headpiece right here, and it's best to hold it closest to the uh, the neck piece that's to the chest, and then you just slightly, slightly t turn it until it pops out, if it can. There we go. Ooh, that was tough. That's not the easiest. And then we get the hands. Pop the hands off by pulling him right by the shoulder pieces. And there it goes. And then they do the same for the next side. Just grab it and then slowly pull it. And then now you can easily take off the bandolier, which slides right off, which is good, which is really easy. And now let's put apart, put back the arm pieces. There goes one. And then there goes two. And then now let's put the child here. And then we put the other head on. And then we have step. And now we have the child on the chest with IG-11 as he's walking towards you. And here we have the guns placed with IG-11 and you can see how awesome he looks just carrying the child down on him and with the guns all displayed. I think this is like one of the best looking figures of, of, of a droid I've seen. So especially because it's from the Mandalorian. And if for anybody who may not have the SH Figure Arts child figure and wondered if you can actually use the Black Series figure, um, that is possible. But the only thing you will have to do is you will have to take off the arms because the whiteness of the arms will not allow it to go through. And then you're going to have to slowly but surely finesse that in there. And once you do and you get it right there, it kind of works. You see, it because he's such a small figure, uh, it'll work with it. And right now I have a custom painted um, head with the eyes closed on this one. So that's not a... That's not one that's like out there, but here we have the figure. Oh, crud. Almost broke it. <laughs> Make sure you guys be careful with your figures. All right. And here we have that particular figure on him. And I think it looks good. I mean, let me get it closer so you can get a better look. But yeah, I think he looks... Pretty darn good if you just have the figure, not the figure, it's the Black Series uh, child, but it will work, definitely. Now let's talk about the articulation on this IG droid. And it does have a lot of good articulation uh, that's way better than I would say the Black Series. So for the beginning, let's start from here. The top portion of his head has this area right here that can turn completely 360. Um, as you can see, that can turn and once you leave it there, it stays there. The next thing that you have is where the eye pieces are, and that can continuously can turn. It does get stuck on certain areas, but it can turn completely. You just have to swivel it around, and that works. And then we have the neck piece that connects to the upper part of the uh, body, and that can turn completely around. So there you have like three options in terms of displaying the headpiece. Now, if we get to the actual shoulder piece, it's very simple. It's very like rotation that goes all the way around, which is very smooth and, and all. And even after taking it off and on, uh, when you're when replacing the bag, it does stay. It doesn't become problematic. It doesn't become loose. So that's good. Then we have the shoulder that can go upward, and it's nice because it looks like it's got a little bit of a of a kick right at the end. Like it'll just hold there, especially if you want to do that whole blaster holding thing. It'll hold it and you don't have to worry about it falling all the time, which is unfortunate for some other figures. And then we have here a bicep swivel right on top of that area too. So it looks really simple and done simply. And because it's so thin, I'm very impressed on how uh, strong it is so far. And now when we go to the elbow, the elbow here can go all the way like 90 degrees and to me that's fine it's a droid and in fact because it's so thin i'm very surprised they were able to get that and because it does break up the scope right here it doesn't really matter to me as long as it actually does what i want it to do 
and and if it sacrifices a bit of the sculpt, which I don't think it does, because it still looks really good right here. Um, I think it just looks great. And then we have, when we get to the arm down here, we have a wrist joint that goes up and down. So, but it can't be turned so that you can have it this way. You just have to, but it will kind of seem weird because it looks like, hey, he's flipping you off, but that's not really the case. Um, it's just, it does help when you're using the guns to position them a certain way. Now, when we get here to the middle uh, torso area, I think it's really interesting that they did this something based on how the show worked. And in the show, as you remembered, the IG-11 does turn his body completely around to protect the child, and then his head turns forward. And I didn't realize that the upper uh, portion here is both sides are the same. So you can never really tell where's the front and where's the back, and uh, except for the piece right here that pops out. Now, one thing I did forget to mention is that because the headpiece can turn, it can also move forward. Oh, sorry. You can also move forward and can move back. I apologize if you didn't see that. So it gives you that really good look to it. But like I said, you can t completely turn it around and and you wouldn't be able to tell if it's the front or back. But luckily for us, the portion here that opens up where we put the detonation sequence orb uh, tells you where the front is. And as we get to the lower part here, it does have a waist swivel, which is good. It doesn't have any ab crunching, but that's fine. I mean, it's a droid. It's not going to do a lot of movement like that. Uh, it would have been nice if they figured out a way to incorporate that. But I think the fact that they, they have all this movement here like this, that I think it just works well. Because that's something I, I want to be able to recreate from the show. And if you look right here in the back, it's a little bit different in terms of the, the piping and all this stuff compared to the front right here. And once we get down to here to... The leg portion this is where we kind of fall a little short or at least if this figure falls a bit short now overall it's still great i just want to say that at the beginning so people don't think I'm, I'm saying that it's not good but the fact that when you try to see if it can open up its legs it just stops there because of the sculpting and the because of the design of this um particular ig unit um it's not able to do that and it's basically because of the original design for IG-88 being the same. It's sort of like they never designed the actual droid to actually do anything in the original trilogies. And when this um, when this one came about from the for the Mandalorian, uh, they did do CGI. So a lot of it was the fact that it moved around a lot better as CGI and opened its legs better and to do a lot of other things, but not this. But anyways, continuing on. We have that the spreads open that much. It does move up here a little bit on top. And then I think that's it. It doesn't have an upper swivel. I don't believe it does. When we get to the knee part, you can see the knee bends pretty good. Another, a little bit over 90 degrees. So that to me is pretty darn good. And the piping here that we have doesn't get in the way. It actually flexes out. Uh, so it makes it easier for him to to move about and not break anything. And we get to the feet part and the feet do move a bit up and they move a bit back and it does have a little bit of a pivot. So what's great about it is that at least knowingly you can try to get him in a stance where his legs can be wide enough and you know, guns ready to go. But I mean, that's as far as it'll go in terms of its ability to open up its legs. And now let's do some size comparisons to other characters that we see from the Mandalorian show. And here I have first is R5-D4 from Bandai's model kit right next to IG-11. Then we have here a Tusken Raider. As you can see, he tends pretty tall over these guys. Take those guys. Then we have here a Scout Trooper in which he takes kicks their ass then we have the this is the new released black series uh stormtrooper with the new body kind of looks really cool also really towers over them and then we have here cara dune and she's really tiny next to him so i don't know if this figure is accurate compared to the show but i mean he is pretty tall 
And then we have here the Black Series Beskar Armored Mando with a custom cape that I just made. It's still a work in progress. But I'm going to also add one other character just because I think a lot of people would, um, were super excited to th think the return of a certain character. And then we have the Mafex Boba Fett. And the Mafex Boba Fett is pretty much a little bit taller than Mando. And his helmet actually looks a lot better than what the Mando's helmet looks like. But overall, that's this height comparison of this character's. And one last comparison, here we have the old Black Series IG-11 next to the Figure Arts IG-11. And there is a huge difference in terms of height. But I can tell you that overall, I'm more liking this figure. Simply because I think the head is much more accurate compared to what this looks like. This looks like, I mean, if you can look at the the shapes of the heads are different. So I'm very happy with the result of what this looks like compared to what this looks like. So overall, guys, I think this is a great figure. I'm really happy to have this figure. Um, it's very unfortunate that it was a Soul Web exclusive, which means that it was limited to certain people. And then if, if you want to get it, um, you may have to pay a little bit more of a premium price on it, which really is unfortunate. But if you are interested in it, keep checking online. I'm sure somebody will still have them out and you'll be able to grab one for yourselves. And luckily, you know, as like I said, this is a really, really good looking figure. I really enjoy it. And I'm hoping that, you know, you guys are able to get one for yourselves. But like I said, this is just an overall good, good figure. Great display option. Um, like I said, I've always wanted to have it to display this way, similar to what it was in the show. And I think it's just awesome. But overall guys, if you, like this video, please press the like button, subscribe. If you have any questions about this figure, let me ask me in the comments below. And I hope you guys are doing well out there and uh, don't worry, things will be fine. And yeah, may the force be with you.